Okay, good, good evening to all of you. Welcome to our class for today. <clears throat> and, and the last time we uh, did meet, we were discussing on how we get the cost, how we get to the, or how we make an evaluation uh, as to whether uh, as a shareholder, uh, if a company counts the proposal, okay, uh, they would want to, well, they, would, they would want to uh, finance okay a project okay by the use of the right issue of shares okay is that proposal going to be worthwhile okay that's what we are discussing the last time it okay so making an evaluation okay uh, as to whether maybe that proposal the company is coming up for is going to have any value increment okay uh, to the shareholder okay we see that you can try you can attempt okay to evaluate this proposal okay by a number of ways, okay. One of them is uh, assessing the implied effect, okay, of the proposal, okay, on the earning per share, okay. What is going to be the impact, okay, of the proposed uh, impact on the earning per share, okay, as well as on the impact it has on the share price, okay. Uh, so there's two the number of ways okay that you can use when it comes to the proposal uh as to which of the option okay uh that shareholder you ought to be take or which one is going to uh be better for you okay so based on any per share uh based on the impact that's for example on the financial risk okay uh based on the impact we'll be having on the share price okay all these are we have tried to make an evaluation as to whether the proposal okay is going to be good okay the last time we met, I think I left you the question, okay, and I truly hope that you did go through it, okay, you did attempt it, okay, so today we are going to attempt, okay, to answer that question, okay, so I hope you did it, okay, because right now I can't be able to tell whether you did or not, but I'm just hoping that you did make that attempt, okay, on that question, okay, so the idea now becomes a bit more easier to cement, okay, if you have to make an attempt, uh, you get stuck, okay, and now you can go to see where you get, uh, where uh, you may have made some errors, okay. Okay, yes, confirm. The question was from so uh Mahir. Mahir. Yes, sir. Uh, it was uh, page sixty-five, Grenup Company. So sixty-five. Sixty-five on Grenup Company. Yes, sir. Okay, so page sixty-five, Grenup Company. Okay. So take one minute, okay, to refresh on what the question required of you, okay. Then we are time together. Yes, a green up company on page 65. Okay, so we'll take one minute. Okay. Okay, I suppose that you have gone through the question. Okay. And the examiner is requiring you the same same way we did uh, with the other question. Okay, we are meant to uh, make analysis. Okay, as to whether this proposed uh, uh, reason of funds. Okay, is going to be helpful to the company. Okay, is it going to assist the company? Okay, and here, don't forget you're trying to analyze based on the effects. Okay, and you have a cost on the wealth of shareholder. Okay, what was the effect of this proposal uh, to use the money to redeem off the debt? Okay, so simply uh, the use of equity. Okay, uh, to reduce the company gearing. The same process that we did discuss last time. Okay, don't forget here. I'm supposing that you're just confirming your, your answers. Okay, uh, since you have already done this question. Okay. Now we'll be told that here the company is going to or the company want to raise 11.2 million. Okay, so the company uh, want to raise 11.2 million through the right share. Okay, and the right share is going to be a one for five. Okay, so it's going to be one for five. Okay, so one for five. Okay. And the issue cost is going to be equal to 80, okay, which is getting paid out of the 11.2 million that you have just been able to raise, okay. So you can begin there, trying to determine, of course, how much money, okay, the company uh, is going to get out of the issue and net of the issue cost, okay. But before you do that, don't forget, it's worth enough you determine, okay, uh, to what price, okay, is the wealth of shareholder uh, remaining constant. In short, therefore, you need to get the theoretical x right share price okay you ought to estimate the theoretical x right share price okay so let's be there okay we determine uh the theoretical x right share price price okay mm.
So we told that the alpha, okay, and we told that the alpha is giving me one for five, okay. So alpha, you be told, uh, is one for five, okay. One you share uh, for every five share that you are currently have as a shareholder. The current share price, you be told, is equal to the current share price is equal to was it 3.5? I think it was 3.5. Current share price to be told. Excuse me. Okay, current share price is 3.5. Okay, we have it here. Okay, and the discount is 8%. Okay, therefore, current share price 3.5. It means, therefore, the offer price. Okay, the offer price is game equal to 80% of 3.5 to give us how much? Okay, to give us 2.8, to give us 2.8. Thank you, Hadik. So to give us 2.8. <clears throat> Therefore, since now we do know the theoretical, we do know the offer price, okay? We know the offer uh, rate, we know the offer, okay? That implies the four. We can now be able to estimate what will be the theoretical excite share price, okay? It be told that you're going to get one you share, okay, but it's not for free. You do pay 2.8 shillings, okay, for that one you share, okay. For you to get this one you share, you must have at least five shares, okay. Don't forget, you need to have five, okay. You need to have at least five shares. And the value of those shares, okay, is 3.5, okay. Don't forget, 2.8 is the value of the, the one you share you have here, okay. Is the value of the one share here, okay. The value of the five will share is 3.5, which you have here, okay. Therefore, times 3.5, okay, we divide by the total number of shares we have after, okay. And shareholder, you'll be having the five old shares, okay, plus the one you share. In total, therefore, you'll be having six shares. Therefore, we divide by six uh, to give us, therefore, what to be the theoretical excite share price, okay. Which is how much? <clears throat> Okay, which will give us 3.38, so 3.38, so 3.38, okay, which imply therefore if the share price, okay, which imply therefore if the share price after all the company has done with this proposal, okay, that is it has obtained the money, is now want to uh, uh, it has paid the money, in short now it, we, are, we are now at the X right date, okay, we are now at the X right date, okay. If the share price then will be at 3.38, okay? If the share price then will be at 3.38, it means therefore the wealth of shareholder remains constant. If the share price then is going to be above, it means for the wealth is going to be more than uh, uh, the current wealth of shareholder. If it's going to be lower, then that implies therefore you're going to be having a case where the wealth of shareholder have decreased, okay? Now our question is what you, we need to predict, okay? The share price then, okay? Following the current variables, okay? In the question, okay, don't forget you say that you're going to be raising, okay, the money is going to be, you're going to raise the money from uh, the ratio share, okay, the total amount of cash to be received is 11.2, however, 280 is going to take care of the issue cost. Therefore, the net amount of money that remain, okay, we can say is going to be equal to, okay, so the net cash raised, okay, net cash that you have just raised, net of the issue cost, 11.2 million, minus the issue cost of 280,000. To give us how much to be the net amount of cash that you have raised from the issue. Okay, so we get 10.92 million. 10.92 million, thank you. So you get 10.92 million because therefore the net cash that we are going to raise. Thank you, Timothy. <clears throat> 10.92 million. Now, this 10.92 million, this is the money the company will be using to pay off the debt order. Okay, this is the amount of money the company shall be using, or the amount of the amount the amount of money available uh, to the company to pay off the debt orders. Okay. Now, the other question is that for every debt debt they are paying, okay, for every debt they are paying, how much are they paying? Okay. So we told the company, okay, hmm, is it? 
So the company, okay, a clause in the contract allows the company, okay, to redeem the note at five percent premium to their market market price, okay. So we need to estimate the market price, okay. So what's the market price of the bonds? The current market value, you be told, is equal to one or four, okay. It's one or four. Uh, so the redemption, okay, is going to be five percent more than one or four, okay. So fair enough. From there, I think we can now be able to estimate, okay. What should be okay the amounts so payment per bond means called redemption value per bond the redemption value yes, this is going to be five percent premium to the current market value of one of four to give us a redemption value how much per bond okay to give us a redemption value of 10.92 that is from here confirm that answer 109.2 to be the redemption value per bond. Okay, the 109.2. Thank you, Timothy. Okay, so for every bond the company is buying back, they shall be paying 109.2, which, which imply therefore, okay, we can determine what is the nominal value of the bonds that the company has bought back. Okay, so the company is paying 109.2 for every bond. Therefore, what's the number of bonds? And once you know the number of bonds, we can go to determine what their nominal value. We can see therefore the nominal value of bonds bought back, nominal value, okay, for bonds bought back is equal to the amount of money we have is 109.2. Okay, so the amount of money we have, the amount of money we have is 109.2. 10.92 million. Okay, so 10.92 million. 10.92 million is the amount of money you have. And for every bond, we are paying 109.2. Therefore, how many bonds do we pay? We simply divide. Okay, the amount of money you have is 10.92 million. And how much do you pay per bond? You're paying 109.2. Okay, that'll give us, therefore, the number of bonds. The nominal value, therefore, look at every bond has a nominal value of $100. Therefore, what's the nominal value of the bonds you have just bought back? Okay, the nominal value of the bonds you have just bought back is equal to 10 million. Okay, 10 million. Okay. So therefore, the nominal value of bonds you have bought back is equal to 10 million. Okay. If you remember, I said that it's you must get this nominal value. Why? Because you need to get the interest you'll be saving. Don't forget the interest you're saving is based on the nominal value, not the market value. Okay. So having done that, that's the nominal value of the bonds we have bought back. There was the interest we save, therefore. Okay, so therefore the next working is on the interest we save. Okay. Therefore, you can say the interest saving. Currently, okay, so going back to the question, okay. Currently, this interest, the interest you do pay is 8%, okay, is an 8% bond, okay, therefore we save, therefore, is an 8% bond, therefore we do save 8% times, okay, the nominal value of the bonds you just bought back, which is 10 million, to give therefore $800,000 to be the annual saving, okay, to be the annual saving, okay, that's the, okay, this is the saving before tax. Okay, so the saving before tax. Therefore, all the net saving, okay, I think this company do pay tax. Don't forget, this is a, is a saving you're making. So the income you're making as a company. So of course you pay tax on it. Okay, therefore, so the next thing is determine, does this company pay tax? Okay, if it does, then we need to, yes, this company pays tax. Okay, this company pays tax at 30% per year. Okay, therefore, we need to tax that saving the company has just made. Okay, therefore, net saving, Therefore, net saving is going to be equal to 800,000. We multiply by 1 minus 0 0.3 to give us an annual saving equal to 560,000. Okay, to give us 560,000 to be the annual net saving. Before this uh, issue was made, okay, or before all this was done, don't forget the company already is, is making some earnings, okay, from its existing projects, okay. Therefore, the earnings the company is currently making, okay, before the company made all this issue, okay, if you told the company earnings per share currently, okay, is 0 0.42, okay, with a total earnings equal to 8.4 million per year, 
Okay, so currently the cap is only 8.4. Now on top of that, we shall be saving 560. Okay, therefore you can say for the revised earnings okay, of the company. Therefore, revised earnings of the company is equal to 8.4 million, the company current earnings, plus the saving they have just made, 560,000, okay, to give us therefore 8.96 million. Okay, that's going for the company. Uh, current device earnings, okay, the company device earnings. Therefore, that's the device earnings, okay. What about the device earnings per share, okay, the device earnings per share, okay. I'll say therefore, revised earnings per share, of course, is the device earnings, the device total earnings of the company. We divide by the revised number of share, okay, the new number of shares, okay, the new number of shares. Therefore, the revised earnings of this company is 8,960,000. We divide by the revised number of share. Don't forget, the company is issuing, so we may need uh, working for it. The company wants to raise 11.2 million. So the company capital they want to raise from the issue okay, is 11.2 million. We have said that this issue or this capital is going to be raised out of the right issue share. Okay. And one share the company is, is obtaining, one share the company is obtaining, okay, is obtaining 2.8. They have how many share must the company issue? Okay, so we divide by 2.8, okay. Okay, which is equal to, <coughs> equal to the new shares we offered, number of shares we offered, we multiply by the offer price, we multiply by the offer price, 11.2 million, is equal to the offer price, we have obtained 2.8, which is 2.8, <coughs> times therefore the number of shares we need to offer, number of shares, there are how many shares must we offer for us to raise the 11.2 million, okay, and we get 4 million, thank you. So the company need to issue 4 million new shares in the market, okay. Currently, how many shares does this company has? That's the next question, okay. If we go back to the question, okay, this company, you go back to its balance sheet, this company has 10 million, okay, worth of shares in nominal value. One share is 0 0.5. They have how many shares does this company has? 20 million, okay, because the total value is 10 million, but the nominal value per share is 0 0.5. They have how many shares this company issued? It is 10 million divided by 0 0.5 to give us 20 million shares, okay. So maybe we can show the work in there, okay. Current number of shares, current number of shares is equal to the nominal value we have just obtained from the balance sheet of this company, okay, 10 million. We divide by 0 0.5 to give us 20 million. Therefore, you can say, therefore, to get the earning per share, going back to where we stepped, we did stop. It is the old share, 20 million, plus the new share, okay, which is equal to 4 million. Now, in this step, we are trying, we are attempting to get the revised earnings per share, okay. Revised earnings, we divide by the revised number of shares, the 20, the 20 old share, plus the 4 new share, 4 million new shares the company has issued in the market. There was therefore the revised earnings per share for this company. Okay, we get 0 0.37. Okay, 0 0.37 of a dollar. That's the revised earning per share. Okay. Now, one of the assumptions, I don't know whether they have told you, they have told you in the question, okay, which, uh, is on the P ratio. Okay. Yes, okay, they've told you here, okay. The company, the PE ratio company is not expected to be affected by the redemption of the notes, okay. Now, even if this statement was not there, okay, we always make an assumption, okay, that the PE ratio of the company is unaffected by any change in the company, unless you're told otherwise, okay. So, we always assume the PE ratio remains constant, okay. So, you may want to determine what's that PE, okay, what's that PE ratio there for, okay. The PE ratio for this company, okay, the question. You can see the price to earning ratio for this company, of course, is the NPS, the market price per share, we divide by earning per share. 
current rate, the P ratio, the MPS is 3.5. Hope you still remember. Okay. We divide by one per share, which from our question. Okay. Okay, P ratio. You see there's a current and price per share. Okay, the current it's here. There's a current price 0 0.42. We divide by the current share price, current share price of this company. We got it somewhere. Yes, it's here, 3.5. So 3.5 we divide by 0 0.42. Okay, therefore, okay. So 3.5, we divide by 0 0.42 to give us example the PE ratio earning. What do you get? The price running ratio method, not the use of P to E to V ratio. So you get 8.33. So you get 8.33 times to be the price to earnings ratio. Okay, 8.33. Now we know the P ratio. We've been told we assume it remains constant. So since since now we know the P ratio. And we know the earnings per share. We have it here. Now, can we get the MPS? You can. Okay. So simply therefore, okay, to be equal to MPS is equal to the P ratio. We have just calculated. We multiply by the earn per share, the revised earn per share. P ratio 8.33. We multiply earn per share, which you just obtained to be equal to 0 0.37. Isn't it? It was 0 0.37. Yes. 0 0.37 here. Okay. And that gives therefore our predicted okay uh mps after the expiry uh, uh at the exit date after the, the exit date okay to give us how much okay to give us eight three point so three point zero eight okay so three point zero eight okay thank you okay three point zero eight okay that is what we anticipate uh, will be the share price now, don't forget, we go back to our original analysis, okay, that we say that if the share price will be at the theoretical excite price, okay, if the share price will be at the theoretical excite price, then the wealth shareholder remains constant. If not, anywhere for the wealth or shareholder will be decreasing. But let's just go back. We see what was our theoretical excite share price, okay, and here it is 3.38. Now, what the share price then after? It is 3.08. You can see there's a huge difference. Okay, it's much more lower than the theoretical excite share price. What does it mean? In therefore, if the company goes ahead and makes this investment, then there will be a decrease. Not if this investment uh, goes ahead and uses money to uh, pay over it, there's going to be a decrease in the wealth shareholder as shown by a lower price of 3.3.08 compared to the theoretical excite share price. Okay, that's the advice. Therefore, this proposal is not good for the shareholder. Okay, at all. Bogi, you meant to make that address. You meant to write down that advice, okay? On whether it's a good proposal or not, okay? We can say um, we can say the debt redemption, the debt redemption <clears throat> will not be financially, okay? Will not be financially acceptable okay, since the forecasted since the forecasted MPS 3.08 dollar is lower than the theoretical than the theoretical excite share price 3.38 okay so we can just stop here okay that this is not going to be financially acceptable why uh, because the forecasted price okay the 3.08 the 3 is lower than the theoretical exit share price of 3.38 okay if it was higher than that then that's a very good proposal okay because it's going to result in an increase in the wealth shareholder if lower than that as in this case it's not a good proposal okay <coughs> That's how you meant to do that question. Okay, I hope you, this this is what you did. Okay, and I hope it was an I hope it was another question. Okay, once you do an example, two example, the question becomes quite straightforward. Okay, question <clears throat> on that bit. I want us to do some further analysis on cases. Okay, trying to assess the impact of a new financial. Okay, a new financing. Okay. 
uh, on the earning per share of the company, okay, not on the share price, because now that's just straightforward now, okay, uh, on the earnings per share as well as on the company financial risk, okay. I guess we have done some few questions on that area, okay, but just to cement our idea, okay. <clears throat> So this one, okay, the K, so you can take note of it, okay? Now actually, what are you going to do, okay? I'll give you an assignment, okay? On page 60, 68, 69, page 68, 69, uh, that question four on uh, Q, KQ, uh, uh, KQK, okay, page 64, on KQK company, okay? So this is your assignment. Yes, so part A. Yes, so part A, I can, can do that as your assignment. Okay, so Dion, so this is assignment. Okay, so due on Thursday. Okay, so due on Thursday. Okay, to of course, to assist you to practice this question, okay, uh, I would propose that you do it on an Excel. Okay, you do it on an Excel. Okay, then you just present me, you just send me the Excel. Okay. Uh, you, or you have my email address, okay? Or you all have my, my WhatsApp. What another you prefer? It would be good for me, okay? So do you, uh, on that day, on the 7th, okay? So uh, page 64, page 68, sorry, 68 on KQK company, okay? And let's do a similar question. That's what I was looking for before that question. <clears throat> okay. And the question will be similar, okay, more or less from once, uh, from one city to the other, okay. Uh, simply trying to assess the impact on the financing terms uh, on the company earning per share, on the company share price, okay, uh, on the financial risk of the company, okay. They, they'll just simply be involving uh, around those things, okay. They're not going to be too different, okay. That's how most of your questions are normally set. Okay, so if you have practice, okay, you'll find your exam quite easy, okay, that is in case you've done enough practice. And here we go. So page, page 85, page 85 on teen company, page 85 on teen company, so page 85, teen company, okay, go through it, okay, we discuss, so teen company, Page 15 company. We attempt the entire question actually, I guess. Yes, so question A, part A, that is. Okay, teen company, page 85. Okay, so go through it. We attempt together. <clears throat> No, actually, let me assign you into groups of three. Okay, you may not attempt it. I guess you're going to attempt it within the five minutes, it's okay. But uh, it's just for you to brainstorm, okay? What should we do here, okay? So have idea as soon as, uh, very quickly, okay? Uh, we should do A, we should do B, we should do C, okay? On all the parts, okay? Uh, that is A, B, that is A, Roman one, Roman two, Roman three, and Roman four, and Roman five, okay? So have a rough idea, okay, on how you should approach this question, okay? So I want to split you up into groups of three. So you're going to be, be three group members, okay? So have an idea on each of the steps you should carry out to answer each of that question, okay? So you may not be able to do the calculation. In case you can have, in case you can have done it, by the time you come back uh, out of the discussion, the better off, okay? But have an idea, concrete idea on how you should approach the question on each of the parts, okay? So I want to give you five minutes, okay? And I want to assign you into your groups. Let's say so groups of three, okay? And we begin. So let me assign you into good groups. Okay, I suppose that you have gone through that question. You have made the necessary attempt on it, okay? 
So it's now to present the idea. Okay. Uh, let me. So the question that we were attempting. Okay. That was a question that we were attempting. <clears throat> We are meant to calculate the theoretical exchange price. We are meant to determine the earning per share in case the company goes ahead and uses, uh, if they use equity finance, okay, the earning per share in case they use debt, uh, the share price are both financing method. And of course, we give the advice as to which of the two financing alternative is going to be good. Okay, so there are two financing alternative, okay, to either to use debt or to use equity. So let me begin, okay. So I'll ask the ideas that your group came up with. Elaine. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so on. So, party is asking us to get the theoretical exchange share price. How did you How did you go about it? Um. First, we got the offer price, which was eighty. Um, eighty percent of five which was four. Okay. So, what's the current share price? The current share price was five dollars. So you went ahead and did determine what should be the offer price. Okay, so offer price was your first step. Okay, I'm right now what you're saying. So offer price is how much therefore? Um, eighty percent of five dollars, which was four dollars. So eighty percent of five dollars, so you get therefore the offer price will equal to four. Okay, that's true. Next. And then um, we were asked to get the theoretical, the TRP, which yes. was one okay. time. So the offer rate was one for five, is it? It was, it was one for five. Yes. Okay, so therefore, the theoretical exchange price is equal to? Um, one times four. Okay, what is one? One is the right. So one is then the, the new share we get. Okay, fair enough. Then how many share must you be having to get the one share? Five. Okay, the value of those five shares? Five dollars. Five dollars. Okay, therefore, to get the, we divide by six by how many shares? Over the total, which was over the total shares, which is six. Which was six. To give, therefore, the theoretical strike price of how much? Oh, sorry. Um, four point three eight. Four point three eight. Okay, so the other groups can confirm. So we get four point three eight with the theoretical exercise here price. That's simple. Okay, that was the first bit. Sorry, four point eight three. Four point eight three. Four point eight three. Yes. Sorry. Oh, not four point three eight. Okay. Yeah. So four point eight three. Four point eight three. Okay. So thank you, Elaine, for that. So the other group groups, in case they are, that's not the answer, that's not what you got. You let us know. Okay. So you get four point eight three. Therefore, to be the theoretical exchange share price. Okay. Now that's for, for that's for part A. Okay. Now part B. Okay, is asking us part B of that question. Was asking us to get. Assuming debt finance is used to calculate the revised earning per share after the business expansion. Okay, so if the company goes ahead and finance the proposed the proposed expansion uh, by the use of equity, okay, what is going to be the earning per share then? Okay, so let me pick a group. <clears throat> Jeffrey. Uh, yes. Yes. So how do you do part two? Uh, we had different differing answers uh, from the same group. Yeah, from the same group. We had different answers. We okay, okay. Tell me yeah. what what did you do? Then you can calculate what you did. Okay. Uh, for me, I yes. calculated the number of shares that were issued from so from the share. yeah the number of shares issued were I, I, I calculated that to be the number of ordinary shares in existence. Mm -hmm. Divided by the it was to twenty five hundred divided by five multiplied by one because I uh, I worked on the on the note that said the nominal value of the ordinary shares is one dollar. So the nominal value of one share is one dollar. Okay, I'm trying to get yeah, where yeah. it is. <clears throat> yes, it is here. In case one dollar, true. Okay, then yes, yeah. You went ahead and did what? 
uh, because it was a one for five rights issue, so, I divided the 2500 by five. Oh, so because it was one for five. So you want to get the number, yeah. the number of new shares to be issued? Yes. So it's a fifth of the, how many shares? A fifth of? Of two, 2500. 2500, yeah, that's true. Okay, so fair enough. We go ahead and do that. Therefore, number of shares, okay, so maybe the new shares that will be offered, okay, is a one for five. Therefore, it's going to be a fifth of the current existing share, which is 2.5 million, okay? Yeah. Okay, plus the old share, isn't it? Yes. Which is 2.5, to give, give you how much? Three million shares. So three million shares, okay. Thank you, Jeffrey, continue. And then I just took the profit of tax and divided by the number of shares, So the profit. revised number of shares, three million. So profit tax was how much? One million. So profit Dollars. was one million, then you divided by the three million. Yes. Okay, that's good. However, so this company is making an investment, isn't it? Yes. And this investment, does it yield returns or it does not? Because I want to guess the, 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 how much money they want to raise. They want to raise some money to make an investment, isn't it? Yes. The company, if you look at the second line in the first paragraph, okay, the company is considering mm -hmm. whether to use equity or debt to finance two million. So they need two million, isn't it? Yes. So they need the two million to make an investment. Now the question is, where or how much return are they going to make in from this investment? If you look at the first line, it is said you know, that the company is planning an expansion of its business operation, which will increase profit before tax. Oh, yes. Yeah. You can see that bit. I have seen, I have seen that. Yes. I forgot that. Okay, so if the company goes ahead and makes this investment, its profit will increase by 20%. Okay, you've seen that bit. Yes. Okay, fair enough. So the, that means, therefore, okay, the new, the profit, okay, profit, the new, the revised profit, let me just call it revised profit is going to be 120% of the old profit, isn't it? Yeah. 120% of the old profit. And the old profit was how much? It was equal to 1 million, yes. No, yes. no, be careful. The, the increase, the increase is on the profit before tax. Okay, get note that profit before, what is increasing is not the profit after tax, but profit mm -hmm. before tax. Yeah, so it is profit before tax. And the profit before tax for this company is 1597, not yes. the 1 million. So what is increasing is the 1597 profit before interest and tax. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so enough. <clears throat> so therefore, we can say therefore, sorry, let me share my board, it's here. So it is 120% times 1597. Okay, therefore, the increase in profit, and this is the profit before interest and tax. To give you how much? Uh, okay. 1916. So give 1916. Point 0.4. Point, the 1916.4, okay. So 1916.4, okay. That's therefore become therefore our revised profit before interest and tax, okay. Yeah. That's good, yeah. okay. Going ahead. Now, the company, so what did you do after that? Oh, you, you just stopped there. Ah, uh, no, 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 actually. Yes. I, I didn't do this. Oh, you didn't do this? This is oh. where I erred. Oh, this, okay, fair yeah. enough. Okay, okay, it's okay, Jeffrey. Okay, thank you for that, Jeffrey. Yes. Let me check someone else that was from Jeffrey. Johannes. Yes. Yes, so after that, did uh, you do this, what you've done, just done here? Yes, 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 I did. Okay, 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 continue. <clears throat> After this? So, after, okay, this is profit before interest and tax. Yes. So, you, 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 you less the finance cost to get the, uh, you less the finance cost. So, therefore, is the, 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 profit the, before, so 1916, 400, we less the interest, okay, finance cost, okay. which is how much? 315,000. So 315,000, so 315, okay, as it is. So 315,000, okay, fair enough. So 315,000. 
So minus three fifteen thousand. And you get how much? You get you get one million six hundred and one. One million six hundred and one. Four hundred. One thousand. Four hundred. Four hundred. Yes. Four hundred. Okay. Out of that, what do you do? And then you get the. And then you tax. Okay. Twenty-two percent. Um, and totally, do you pay the tax? Twenty-two percent. You pay at twenty-two percent. Okay. Then you pay tax at twenty-two percent. Okay. So therefore, tax. Twenty-two percent. You pay a tax of how much? You pay a tax of three hundred and fifty-two. Three hundred and fifty-two thousand. Thousand, yes. Thousand, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so so you pay three hundred fifty thousand. Therefore, okay, the same profit of a tax is how much? Once you deduct the tax, you pay, uh, you get a profit of how much? I got a profit of one million two hundred and forty-nine thousand. One million four hundred and. Four hundred, one million two hundred and forty-nine thousand. Mm -hmm. Four forty-nine thousand. One two forty-nine. One million two hundred and forty-nine. One no, million two forty-nine. Okay, one million yeah. two one million two forty-nine thousand. Mm -hmm. That figure. Four hundred. Four hundred thousand. Four hundred. Four hundred dollars. Okay, so one million yeah, uh, yeah. two forty-nine thousand four hundred. Okay, thank you for that so far. Okay, next what did you do? Next, um, for me to get the revised earnings per share using equity, okay. I divided that answer by I divided that answer by increased number of shares. So we divide so the, the earnings twelve forty nine thousand four hundred okay. divide by the number of shares. Yeah, and then the increased work? number of shares. Which three was million. Much? Three million. Then three, the increased number million. of shares was, was three million. It was three million. So we divide by three million. And the revised earnings per share is how much for this case? 0 0.42. 0 0.42. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, we get 0 0.42 to be uh, the revised earnings per share in case the company goes ahead and finance using the equity financing option. Yes, that's what you meant to have done it. Okay, so thank you all for all, all, all who did participate in that particular section. Okay. That's what you're meant to do, have done in that particular part. You can see it's not, it's not a very, it's quite a straightforward question, okay? Okay, so next is part B of the question. Look, in case you have a question, don't forget, you let me know, okay? We attempt to answer all of us together. <clears throat> so that was part one, that was part two. Part three, okay, is the same process, but now what if you finance using uh, debt financing, not equity, but debt financing, okay? How do you go about it? Okay. To Mandela. Yes. Yes. How do you go about it now? I don't know, three. Okay. Um <clears throat> for for the debt finance, yes. uh, we've been told that um Tinko will issue to twenty thousand eight percent loan note. Mm -hmm. So for the um, interest, yes, we we'll get eight percent times mm -hmm. twenty thousand. So interest the company should be paying is eight percent. Is eight percent a loan? Mm -hmm. Is it an eight percent? Yeah, eight. Yeah, eight percent. Okay, so the loan that you're going to be issue is going to be an eight percent. Just what? Yes, it is an eight percent. Okay, you can see it here, eight percent. Okay, then after that, so eight percent uh, of two million. Yeah. And you get how much interest? You get um sixteen hundred. Are you sure? Is it, are you sure? Sixteen hundred. I did. Oh, I, I've put. Uh, I've placed it in in, in the uh, the thousand form. Sorry, let me just. It's one point six million. Are you sure, Madera? No, I doubt, because it is eight percent of two million. Or zero point one six. Okay, so you get one sixty thousand. You get one sixty thousand. Thank you. Okay, so you get one thousand. Okay. Yes, Next. and then you, you multiply it with the nominal value, which was a uh, hundred. Okay, so you, note. so the interest was sixty multiplied by hundred. Yes. Okay, you get how much? You get sixteen. Uh, what 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 is it, sixteen million or sixteen thousand? 
16 million. 16 million. Okay, so you get 16, so it's 160,000 times 100, so you get 16 million. What is this 16 million, Mandela, if I was to ask? Um, okay, uh, I have forgotten the, 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 the exact uh, word. The, the, the exact word for it. <laughs> so wh why do you want to get the 16 million? It's the 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 interest mm -hmm. um the interest that uh they will they will be given after they take the loan or every year um no don't worry Mandela. just just say what 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 we're thinking <laughs> mm, yes i think so Okay, so maybe if you go to the question again, okay, uh, just to uh, where the debt finance is, okay. So if you look at that point for debt finance, we are told that 10 company will issue 20,000 8% note. Can you see that? 20,000 8% note whose value is 100, okay. Mm -hmm. Which imply therefore, okay, the total nominal value of the note the company has issued is 20,000 times 100, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Which we get 2 million. So therefore, the total amount of loan the company has obtained is 2 million, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. So therefore, in case you go to your working, therefore, okay, the interest you'll be paying is 8%, okay, just so the way you've just told us, 8% of 2 million, and we get 160,000. Mm -hmm. So so this the, this working, therefore, okay, this working, therefore, uh, it, it will be a bit confusing to you because it leads, it, it doesn't lead anywhere because you've done what you wanted to get and you want to get the interest yeah. which you have here already so you don't need that other work so you have one sixty already here okay mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so you don't need the the the, the one that's to go the working for 16 million okay okay so you yeah. continue so we you know we know the interest now you're going to be paying in every year is one sixty thousand okay yes yes continue <clears throat> Uh, and uh, since we had, uh, you go back to the new profit before interest and tax, which was uh, 1916.4. Okay. So we got it somewhere. We got uh, 1,916,400. Okay, fair enough. Okay, we have it there. So plus then, tax, 1,916,400. Then after that? You, you deduct the, now the interest, which is 160,000 the interest so before this uh, uh before the issue before this company use this debt okay do they pay an interest before yes so they're paying an interest before yes how much were they paying three, they're paying uh, three, 315,000. so the new interest is it a new or is it is it going to be added or subtracted or what will happen Okay, so the, the one sixty. Yes. Uh, the one sixty thousand. You'll add it to the the current finance cost, which was three hundred and fifteen. Yes. Then you deduct it from the new profit before interest and tax that we okay. got. Yeah, okay. So you just therefore total uh, maybe just revised interest. Total revised interest. Current trade the company is paying thirty fifteen thousand. Then on top of that, it shall be paying an extra one sixty thousand to give us how much. Three fifteen plus one sixty. Uh, four hundred and seventy-five. So you get four seventy-five thousand. So this is what we can subtract from the company profit. Okay. So we come here, we subtract four seventy-five thousand. That's true. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we get a profit before tax of how much? Not just from her, even the rest of the class. Don't forget, you can contribute. So you get profit before tax of how much? One million. Four hundred and forty-one thousand and four hundred. One million four forty. Forty-one. Four forty-one thousand six hundred. Four hundred. Four hundred. Okay. So you get yes. one million four for four for one thousand four hundred. Okay. Yes. Then you pay tax at a rate of thirty percent. Is it twenty-two percent? Sorry. Twenty-two percent. Okay. How much tax do you pay there for? Uh, three hundred and seventeen thousand one hundred and eight. One hundred and eight. So that's the tax we are paying. Okay. 
Okay, in the verse 17, one way you become for the tax, you shall be paying. Therefore, the profit of tax from the investment. One million. Yes. One twenty-four thousand. One twenty-four thousand. Uh, two ninety-two. Two ninety-two. And therefore, the profit of tax only from uh, from the investment. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, having done that, we have now the profit. Now we can now be able to get the earning per share, isn't it? Yes. Therefore, you can say our next working is revised earnings per share to be equal to. We have our earning, which is equal to one million and one twenty-four thousand. 292. We divide by how many shares? Two, two, 2,500. So 2.5 2. 2. million. 2. 5. Yes. 2.5 million. Don't forget the number of shares in this case do not increase. Okay. There were 2.5, not like in the first, first uh, financial transaction of equity. Okay. For the debt, the shares remain constant at 2.5 million. Okay. That's good. So you get how much annual share? Um, Zero point. Four five. 0.45, okay, so you get 0 0.45 to be the reverse and per share, okay. That's good, Mandela. Thank you. And you get 0 0.45, therefore, to be the revised earnings per share, okay, from that financing alternative, okay, that is for Roman 3, okay. Roman 4, or the same question, okay. One four of the same question is asking us to get the share price, okay, under the both financing alternative. Okay, what is giving the share price under both financing alternative? Okay, equity as well as the debt. Okay, so that's our next working there for. Okay, you can say working four. This is the revised share price. Revised share price. Okay, so we can begin with a. If we have to use equity. Okay, so let me pick someone else to take us through. Timothy. Yes. Okay. Yes. You you did attempt on this on this part. Yes, I did. Okay, fair enough. Take us through. Um, in the question you've been given a price over earnings ratio of twelve point five times. So in the question, we told the PE ratio, okay, for this company is 12.5 times. Yes, you're being that. Yes. Okay. okay. Um, to get the revised share prices then, mm -hmm. we would multiply the PE ratio yes. by the EPS. So MPS is equal to PE ratio times the earnings per share. Thank you. Uh -huh. yes. So for debt? Uh, for debt, we'll multiply mm -hmm. so for, sorry, for equity. For equity. Sorry, for equity. Okay. For equity, we multiply 12.5 so times, 5 0, times 0. 0.42. Times 0 0.42. We get how much? 5.25. Yeah, 5.25. Okay. That is under the equity financing. Okay. Yes. Debt financing. For, for debt, we multiply 12.5 times 0 0.45. 0.5 times 0 0.45, the revised earnings per share. And you get how much? 5.625. 5.63. 5.625. Okay. Yes. That's become the for to be our share price. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Timo. Thank you, Timo, for that. Okay. So that's going the for uh, what to be the share price. Okay. Depending on what financial alternative uh, that the company is going to be choosing. Okay. Now, the last bit of the question. Okay. Okay. The last bit of the question is asking us to uh, comment. Okay. I think Roman 5 is asking us to comment as to. Using calculation to evaluate whether uh, equity or debt finances should be used, okay, for proposed business expansion, okay. So you may determine, okay, which of the financial alternative is going to be good for the company. Okay, should you use equity or should you use debt? Don't forget, these are four marks, so you can't you can't just say debt, okay, and you stop there. It's you say debt, and of course you explain why maybe debt is good. If you say you say that equity is good, then of course you need to support it, okay. Why is equity financing going to be good, okay? So let me get someone else to take us through on that beat. Pavita. Pavita. Pavita, are you there? Yes. Yes, yes I'm there, I'm there. Okay, so Roman 5, take us through. Roman 5, okay. 
Now, um, according to Roman 5, it says uh, whether we should take uh, debt or equity for the finance. Um, yes. According to the calculations we have done, yes. I would say uh, both options are viable. Yes. As um, the share price, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the market price per share is yes. uh, higher than the TERP. Mm -hmm cases so the company should uh, go for both it would be much better for them to use uh, debt as it has a higher market uh, price per share um, so the, the two methods are good because the share price uh, at equity was 5.25 the share price at debt was 5.63 okay and they're both higher than the theoretical type price which you got we got 4.83 so they're good yes they are good methods for financing Yes. Okay, and I can't agree anymore. Okay, that's the two method. They are good finance for the company. Why? Because the share price, okay, uh, of five point two five, okay, and five point three six, okay, they are higher than the five, yes. the four point eight three, uh, eight three we had for uh, the theoretical equity uh, price. That's really good. Okay, that's the first bit we need to discuss. Okay, thank you, yes. thank you, Papita, for that. Okay, so that's the first bit. Okay, don't forget this question has has five, four marks, okay? So that's the first argument, okay? Okay, that they're good, okay? Uh, so, so both debt, okay? Okay, so both debt and equity, don't forget this game, uh, uh, and, uh, so you be, for the comment, okay, don't forget it's going to be uh, one document, okay, that you're going to be having in your main exam, okay, so you need to practice on that, okay. So both just an equity financing, an equity financing are financially acceptable, are financially acceptable, okay, since the revised in the revised market price per share, okay, okay, is greater than the theoretical excise share price, okay, and both financing alternative, and both financing alternative, okay, alternative, okay, so that they're good method finance for the company, okay, why? Because the MPS in both of the method is greater than the theoretical excite share price okay i agree that's a good method okay maybe you can also have a discussion regarding the earning per share okay so you, you don't need that okay you but you may you may want to uh, have a discussion on the earning per share okay what was the earning per share before and what was the earning per share after and above the methods okay so you compare under the old method what was the earning per share and the new method was the earning per share okay i guess under the old method what was earning per share so not the old method, okay, before uh, the company came over okay, to finance the expansion, what was the earning per share? Okay, I think we may need to make a calculation because it's not given. Or is it given? Okay, 0 0.4, was it given or it's unit calculate? I guess you mean calculate. Okay, this is not given, so I guess you may want to calculate. Okay, so therefore, calculation. Okay, maybe a single calculation on the earning per share. Okay, so that was the first argument. The second argument was on the earning per share. Okay, just to call the current earning per share, it will be the earnings 1 million divided by normal shares 2.5 million. Okay, to give us 0 0.4. Okay, so you can argue based on earning per share. Okay, that's if the company was to finance using equity, the earning per share we got not how much we got 0 0.42. The earning per share we got 0 0.42. Okay, that is equity. If they use debt, the earning per share, okay, we got 0 0.45. Okay, so at above, okay, method, okay, the proposed earning per share, okay. Uh, is getting it higher, okay, but the current earning per share. So it's something good, okay, in terms of uh, profitability, okay, they show that the company profit will be increasing uh, even on per share basis, okay, so they are good for financial alternative, okay, so you can say that, okay.
also financially acceptable. Okay, they're also financially acceptable. Financially acceptable. Okay. Since the device and per share, and both the, the device are in per share, and both methods, okay, is greater. Than the current and per share, the current and per share, okay, zero point four zero. Okay, so at both methods, the and per share is greater than the current and per share of zero point four two because at the debt financing we got zero point four five, at the equity financing we got zero point four two. Okay, then if you look at the question, okay, if you look at the question, they have been given some other issue. Okay, then you can take it back to the question. He be given the debt to credit issue, okay? He be told the debt to credit issue, okay? Currently is equal to 60.5. Then another issue is on the interest coverage issue. So these are measures of the company financial risk. Okay, I think we mentioned last week, okay? That we have two methods, okay? Of assessing the company financial risk, okay? One of them is by the use of debt to credit issue, okay? And also the use of the interest coverage issue, okay? So can you use that as an argument? Let's work it out. So what is going with the debt trade issue at the both methods? Okay, so you can begin here. Okay, there's part five still. Okay, so on the financial risk, can begin the first one is the use of the debt trade issue. So debt trade issue at the equity, so can be the first one is the use of equity. If it's to use equity, the debt of the company, don't forget it remains constant. The debt remains constant. Okay. So going back to the question, the company balance sheet. Okay. If we took the long term debt of the company is 4.5. Okay, that remains constant because we are using equity now, not debt, but equity. Okay, so debt remain at 4.5. Okay. So the debt of the company remain at 4.5 million. But equity is now going to increase. Okay, because we are financing. Uh, the uh, uh, expansion cost, the two million, by the issue of shares. Okay, so currently the company has an has an equity position equal to two point five plus five point four million. Two point five for the shares and five point four for the return earning to give us a total of how much to be the company current earnings, the current equity of the company is how much. Company current equity is how much? Therefore, two point five is the odd is the nominal value or the book value of the company equity shares, and the five point four is return earning. Don't forget the two give us equity. The equity, the uh, ownership capital, as well as the ten earnings give us the company equity. So currently, how much do you have? Be the company equity. <clears throat> so you get ten million uh, nine eighty eight. Okay. So currently. The company has an equity position of same million nine eighty eight. Now the company is financing the two million by the issue of shares. There the company equity increase by two million, therefore plus two million. And of course we express this as a percent. We express this as a percent. Okay, to give us how much? Okay, and we get 45%, okay? And we get 45% to be the company a debt to ratio in case the company goes ahead and finance using equity. Now, what if we are to use debt? What if we are to use debt financing, okay? Now, don't forget now the debt is increasing, okay? We are going to increase by 2 million, okay? The company is issuing bonds of 2 million. Therefore, debt, our numerator, 4.5 million increased by 2 million. However, equity remains. Now, actually, just a minute. After the expansion, the company will make some profit, isn't it? The company will make some profit. And the company profit 
Hmm. We need to get that. If you look at the question, you've done this analysis before. Oh, let's just go back. Can we told the company earnings are changing. Yeah, what was that? Mm -hmm. Earnings of the company. If you to use equity, becomes so this was equity out of the equity financing, the earnings of the company. This is our revised earnings of the company, 1249400. Okay. And here, I think you're going to make an assumption. Assuming the company does not pay dividend, or does this company pay dividend? Mm -hmm. Average interest cover of nine times. This company, I don't see anywhere mentioned about the company paying the dividend. Okay, there's no mention on the company paying dividends. So here we have to make an assumption. This company does not pay dividend. Which imply therefore, okay, for this company, the equity is going to increase by the earnings it is going to make. So in case we are to use equity, the company equity is increasing by 1249 also. If you to use debt, this can therefore if you have to use it, this account therefore the company earnings. So the equity is increasing by the earnings for that particular time period. So that's what we have just forgotten. So we need to increase it by 1249. So equity of this company is it? And yes, here we ought to increase. Okay, so allow me to rub off our previous work in here. <clears throat> Okay, so because here we need to increase it by we increase this by the earnings so that we have top time period at the equity. It is two million. How much is it? Two million two forty nine four hundred. So twelve okay forty nine forty nine four hundred. Of course, we express as a percent. Okay, so don't forget that. Okay, that the company also the earnings of the company are also increasing. So here we have made an assumption. Okay, that this company don't pay dividends, so the earnings will increase by the entire uh, earnings for a particular year. But well, the company didn't pay any dividend. And you get how much? And you get forty four. Hmm? So the answer are conflicting. Is it 40 or 44? Someone confirm 40 or 44? 40. Okay, Timothy, check. It's, it's 40 or 44. Okay, so I probably suppose that it's meant to be 40. Okay, Timothy, check your work is. So you get 40%, therefore, to be the revised debt to ratio in case you have to use equity financing. Okay. What if we have to use, okay, what if we have to use debt financing? What if you use debt financing? The company debt is increasing by 2 million. So it'll be 4.5 million plus the 2 million you have just issued, plus the equity before was 7988, plus the earnings, okay, we're going to make, and the earnings we make out of, in case to use debt, this is what we make. We make 1124.292. So you make 11, well, eleven twenty four two nine two nine two. So 11, 24, 292, and we express as a percent. To give us a much to be the company gearing by use of uh, other the debt finance alternative. And get 71, 71, confirm that answer, 71.3%, uh, okay? We get 71.33%, because therefore the company gear it, okay, as measured by uh, the debt to equity ratio, okay? 
Then we are also being given another issue there on the interest cover issue. Interest cover issue. And the interest cover issue, okay, is simply going to give us, okay, we said it's given us, it's simply how many times can the company be able to pay off uh, its interest? Okay, how many times can the company pay off its interest from its earnings? So it's, so it's given us the profit before interest tax, we divide by the interest. Therefore, we can begin the first one. If you have to use equity, what's the interest cover ratio? Or the big or two? The profit before interest tax from a previous working, the profit before interest and tax, mm -hmm. we got the yeah, it is. It's one million uh, nine sixteen four hundred, irrespective of what method you're going to use. It remains the same. Okay, so nineteen sixteen four hundred. Okay, so nineteen sixteen four hundred. We divide by the interest. Now the interest. Don't forget, if the company can continue using equity, the interest doesn't change because they're using equity. So it remains at three fifteen thousand. That is as per the question. Just to share okay don't forget the company interest remain constant at 315,000 because the company is using equity so the debt their interest remains constant okay 15,000 and you get how much how many times okay and we get six times confirm so we get six times So from Timothy, we got six times. Confirm, okay, from here, thank you. So you get six times, okay? That is from the use of equity. Okay, what if you have to use debt? What's the interest cover? Now the profit will be the same. The profit before interest tax will be the same. So it's gonna be 19, 16, 400. We divide by, the interest now increase, okay? I think from some workings we got here, the interest the company is paying, Increase to some ARC it is okay. The interest the company shall be paying increase to 475. So we divide therefore by 475 divide by 475 to give how much? Give four times to give four times. Okay, thank you for that. No. Don't forget, in these two uh, ratios, okay, we want to comment on the company financial risk. We are trying, we are attempting to comment on the company financial risk, okay. Uh, both the debt to ratio as well as the interest cover ratio, okay, they want to assist us through that, okay. Now, let's compare what was the cover before, okay, what was the company financial risk before, okay, based on the two ratio. Now, based on the company debt to equity, it was 60.5. 60.5 okay okay 60.5 now based on here okay we'll be told that in case you use debt to equity ratio okay we if you use equity the gearing is 40 percent no it was 60.5 if you use debt now it is even higher than that it is 71 with implied therefore if the company was to use debt financing if the company was to use debt financing then they're going to have a higher financial risk why because the gear in this company is higher than the 60.5. As 21.33, okay, it is increasing from 60.5, okay? And as you say, the, an increase in the debt ratio indicates an increase in the company financial risk. For the case of the equity financing, it shows a reduction in the company financial risk. Why? Because the ratio is decreasing from 60.5 to 40%. That's what you meant to make a comment on, okay? Now let's compare the same thing with now the use of the interest cover issue. Okay, let's see whether, how, how, where, where it leads us to. Okay, now company currently has an interest cover issue of nine times. Okay, nine times. Okay, if we go ahead and finance using the two method, okay, we get the equity, we're going to get six times, our debt we get four times. So what are both financing alternative, okay? Whether equity or you're going to use debt. We have a higher financial risk in either of those two financing alternatives. Okay, they indicate a higher financial risk. Why? Because the interest cover issue, the interest cover issue okay, uh, for equity is six times, for debt is four times, and they are both below 
the recommend, recommended, okay, or they are both below the nine times the current index cover ratio of this company. Okay, that's what I meant to comment on it on. Considering that these are only four marks, okay, so I would suppose that you don't take a lot of time like you've taken here, okay. Uh, I've taken the analysis a bit further, okay, but uh, we suppose you don't take a lot of time, okay, don't take too much time. Now, in conclusion, what, are, what do we say? Should you use equity or should you use debt? Okay. In conclusion, don't forget you're going to use debt financing. Why the share price? So don't forget uh, it's about the share price. Okay. It leads to an increase in the wealth of shareholder. Okay. That's the ultimate point of discussion. The company should go ahead and finance using uh, debt financing. Why? Because it leads to a higher share price at five point. It was five point at five point six three. Okay compared to equity at 5.25. Don't forget, you can only pick one, okay? And of course, you pick the one again to result to a higher increment in the shareholders' wealth. In this case, the debt financing alternative coming for our conclusion. Clear? Question? Okay, so in case there's no question, then I guess we can take a break. Okay, welcome back. <clears throat> so our next topic is on cost of capital. However, I don't want to start it now. That will be our next topic on cost of capital. Trying to estimate what each provider of capital uh, expect to receive at the end of the day for every dollar of capital that they're going to be financing the company. Okay. So I don't want to start that new topic right now. Okay. I would want you okay to do a very simple question okay from uh, your past paper. Okay. It should not take me more, more than one minute actually. Okay. So if you check on page 77, check on page 77 on your question bank. Page 77. Page 77, question 15. Page 77, question 15. Okay. So attempt that in the next one minute. It's a it's a section A it's a section A question, which means therefore you ought not to take more than one minute. Okay. Page 77, question 15. Okay, I see most of you have at least attended the question. And you have to be careful here, okay, because obedience here is not the theoretical excite share price, okay? That's what you have to be quite careful, okay? You being asked to get the value of a right, the value of a right based on the existing share. And if you remember, we say that when it comes to estimate the value of a right, okay, uh, on per existing share basis, okay, we said it is simply uh, the MPS minus the theoretical extract share price okay therefore in this question we need to get the theoretical extract share price okay which is how much the offer is one for four we'll be told that the share is going to be offered at six shillings per share the new share okay is going to be offered at six shillings per share the current share price you be told is equal to uh, eight okay therefore So it can have, therefore, determine the theoretical extract share price, which is equal to, it's a one for, let me just go back, it's a one for four, it's a one for four. So one for four. So one we multiply by, you need to pay six to you to get this one new share. And for you to get this one new share, you must have four shares, whose value is equal to eight, okay? Therefore, the value per share after, and that is the number of share you have after is equal to one plus an old four to give us five, to give us how much? To be the theoretical excise share price. And we get the theoretical excise share price go to 7.6, okay? 7.6 dollars, okay? Therefore, to get the value of a right, value of a right, this is on the old share, the existing shares, okay? Is equal to the current MPS, 
minus theoretical x right share price 8 minus 7.6 and you get 0 0.4 that's you see the hell you're meant to do it okay the what if you have the question you, you are being asked okay the value of right as per new share okay as per the new share you'll be getting okay if that's how the question was being asked okay not was being asked here okay then therefore the value of right okay this is as per uh shares you'll be receiving let me just call it new shares don't forget it's b equal to the theoretical extra share price minus the offer price to give us therefore 7.6 minus the offer price equal to 6 and you get 1.6 and you can see it's part, it's one of the answers the examiner has given you it's actually it's part is in question a so you have to be quite careful okay that you don't mix them up okay you have to be quite careful okay you don't uh, mix them up okay anyway that was a question that was meant to assist you to see that it can sometimes the question can be asked even from uh, even in part a okay now to close off the chapter okay don't forget uh, as i told you okay I hope you still remember for those who are there at the beginning of the semester okay there's a bit of finance which i mentioned that uh, will ask you to go and discuss on your own that is on the islamic finance okay so that bit of islamic finance i would propose that you go and read on your own because okay there's nothing there's nothing uh, that requires uh, too much attention there okay but it can be it's not that it can be it can be asked it can be asked okay uh, i would propose that you go through it uh, on your own final question to close that topic okay is on page 44 45 page 44 45 on a company called gxg company so page 44 45 on gxg company okay for now don't go through option one okay we have not done that part of the syllabus so don't go through, don't go through option one we go through option two option three we attempt to answer uh part b c okay so go through the question we attempt to answer BC, GXG company, page 44, 45. Okay, so it takes two minutes to go through that question. Then we attempt it together. Okay, now we are going through the question. Um, this question is just like what you've just done right now. Okay, on um, trying to make an evaluation on whether I should use debt or I should use equity. There's no difference actually, okay? It's more or less like the same, same set of question, okay? And that's why, if you, normally say that financial management, very, it's financial management, okay? It's a very easy paper, okay? But that means you need to come to class, okay? So that you can help you to see how the examiner sets the exam, okay? It's not going to set out of, uh, there's nothing extraordinary in this particular paper, okay? So the question again to revolve around the same, same thing, okay? And normally said, in case you just come to class, okay, you do the assignment, you do the rest of normal like two, okay, you are sure of passing this particular paper, okay. So this is an exact replica of what you just discussed before, okay. Either way, let's attempt it together, okay. Now, part B is asking you, we get an per share, okay, and you comment as to whether it is going to be financially acceptable to the shareholder, okay, purely based on the per share, okay. Also, we are meant to, in part C, we are meant to get an per share and the interest cover, interest cover, in case now we finance using option three, and of course you comment on your findings, okay? So you can get an per share based on the stock market listing, okay? So in the stock market listing, this company want to do, okay, they want your shares, so first they want to obtain 3.2 million, okay, the first uh, need to do it. But this is, the 3.2 is after the 100,000, which implies therefore the total amount of money the company need to obtain from that stock market listing should be 3.3, okay? That's why you can uh, end up confusing. And of course, in case you don't get it, then you're going to have the wrong workings, okay? The total amount of money company want to uh, raise is 3.3. Once we take the 100,000, then we have the 3.2, which the company is going to use to finance in the research, okay? The first need to note, okay? The company must raise 3.3, okay? 
there's the African effort of sort of our first working. Okay. So this is page 44, page 45. So from part B, they have come to be raised. The come to be raised is equal to 3.2, 3.2 plus the issue cost. And it's equal to 3.2 plus 0 0.1 million. To get the true amount to be raised is 3.3 million. Okay. And one share, okay, for every share the company is issuing, the amount of money they shall be obtaining, you'll be told is equal to 2.5 shillings. Okay. Therefore, from there, I think we can be able to obtain how many shares the company need to issue for it to get the entire the total capital of 3.3 million. Okay. Therefore, the number of shares that must be issued must be equal to 3.3 million. We divide by the amount we receive from each share, 2.5. Give us how many shares? Okay, to give us 1.32 million new share the company need to issue in the market for it to be able to obtain the uh, 3.3 million that they want. Okay, 1.32. Okay, which means therefore we can now be able to determine how many share is the company going to have after. Okay, then we can see here revised number of shares, revised number of shares after you be equal to the new 1.32 million plus the already existing shares. Okay, if, if you go to the question, the question, okay, the balance of this company, we be told the total nominal value of the company is 5 million. One share has a nominal value of 50 cents. They have how many shares has the company issued? 5 million divided by 0 0.5 to give us 10 million. Okay, therefore 5 million divide by 0 0.5 to give us 10 million. So this company will be having an issue 11.32 million shares. Okay. Hope so far so good. <clears throat> having known the number of shares, we can now be able to determine the, don't forget, we need to get the earning per share. We need to get the earning per share. And earning per share is equal to uh, the, we just call it profit attributable to the shareholder, or simply the profit of a tax. We divide by the number of shares. We do have our denominator. So we need to get the profit of a tax. Now the company, from this research, how much are they going to earn? So once the company invests this fund, you be told they shall be earning 8%. The profit, uh, before tax it will be a 18% per year. It will be 18% per year. How much are they investing? They're investing 3.2 million. Would they imply therefore, they can determine the amount of earning the company shall be making from the project only, from this research only. You can see, earnings before tax, this is from the project only, this is from the project, it will be 18% of the amount the company is investing. They're investing 3.2 million. Therefore, how much will be the earnings only from the project? And the amount of earnings the company is making from the project alone, okay, is equal to 576,000, okay? Don't forget, this is before tax, okay? So since it's equity, there's no interest the company is paying, okay? So there's no interest the company is paying on the project, okay? Would you imply, therefore, they can get the net earnings from the project? net earnings from the project alone, or maybe the term net earnings. So for this company, okay, don't forget they do pay tax, they pay tax, let's check whether they pay tax. For this company, they do pay tax at 20% per year. They pay tax at 20% per year, okay? So out of those earnings the company has just made, 20% goes to the government, so they remain with 80%, okay? Therefore, you can see therefore earnings, okay, from the project alone, is one minus 0 0.2 times 576,000 plus, don't forget for this company, already they're making some earnings from some other investment, okay? Therefore, in case you had to go to its p &L, the earnings the company is currently making, okay, before this investment, okay, before uh, the profit after tax is 2.6 million, okay? So before this investment, the company already make earnings, okay, and they do make 2.6 million after tax basis, therefore plus, 2.6 million plus the 2.6 million to give therefore the company uh, revised earnings, which is how much? 
okay and we get three million sixty thousand eight hundred dollars okay so that is going to be the earnings only from uh, the total earnings the revised total earnings of the company after they make the investment which imply therefore from there we have the numerator okay and we have the denominator which imply therefore now we can go to get the earnings per share if we can say therefore revised earning per share revised earning per share will be equal to the profit three million sixty thousand we divide by the number of shares which you obtain here okay 11.32 million to give us how much okay to give us an earning per share equal to 0 0.27 over dollar but what was earned per share before okay so this is the device earned per share what was earned per share before then per share before okay so because we need to make a comment okay is it increasing is it decreasing so you will be we are comparing before and after the investment okay so we have now the earned per share after the investment but what was earned per share before the investment okay see earning per share okay so there's a current earning per share that is before the investment okay so i'm not sure the company whether the, in the question you've been given i guess we need to calculate okay quite easy it is a profit we divide by the number of shares 2.6 million we divide by 10 million okay because this is a profit before and this was the number of shares which is 5 million divided by 0 0.5 okay very simple one 2.6 million we divide the number of shares which we already have done calculation here okay we have we have it them here okay to give us 10 million okay so divide by 10 million to give us 0 0.26 of a dollar okay 0 0.26 of a dollar okay and now we can make a comment okay look this was an per share before and this is the an per share after a good proposal of course it is okay as you can see it is leading to an increase in the time and per share from 26 cents per year to 27 cents per year so this is a good finance alternative the company uh, should finance the project using the equity financing or using the uh, uh stock market listing why because it results to an increase in the annual share from 26 cents to 27 cents that's your main comment okay in that particular question don't remain to write down that comment okay i've just mentioned it right now okay uh, but essentially you should Anyway, you meant uh, I normally search the easiest way for you to do this is anywhere you do an analysis, okay, always make a comment, okay, whether the exam asks you or not. Okay, because you may end up forgetting. If you don't make it a habit, you may end up forgetting to make the comment. Okay. So what's the comment? The company or this seem to be a financially acceptable uh, finance alternative. Why? Because it results to an increase in an per share from 26 cents to 27 cents. Okay. So that's clear. Now, the next part C of the question, okay, is asking us to get, I think it's more towards the financial risk, okay, it's more towards the financial risk, because it's asking us to get what? It's asking us to get an impact share, actually, an impact share, as well as the interest cover ratio, and we make a comment, okay? So, an impact share under the use of debt. Option three was on debt, okay? So, they're paying 6%, okay? Okay. And that is it. Okay, fair enough. Okay, therefore, under part C, we may want to determine the interest the company should pay on the capital they are raising. Now, in this case, okay, you don't need to. Uh, uh, we simply, we simply need to determine the interest the company is paying on the new debt. Okay, on the new debt. So simply, therefore, the company on the new debt, the company paying an interest of six percent or thirty point two. In this case, don't forget you don't have issue cost. Okay, not like in option two where we had issue cost. In this case, we don't have the issue cost. Okay, so if there was if if there was issue cost, then your cost we need to add it. Okay, if there was. Okay, but for this example, there is no issue cost. Okay, yeah, for simply it is two point two. Therefore, six percent times three point two million. Can therefore the interest the company pays on the debt will give us how much interest do we pay. And we get one in two thousand. We get one in two thousand to be the interest you pay on the new debt. Okay. Now, 
don't forget this investment is bringing some money this investment is bringing how much it's bringing 526000 this investment is bringing 526000 okay which imply therefore but be careful the 526000 is before tax i hope that's what the question was saying the 18 percent was earning before tax not earning before interest and tax okay so uh, be careful on the terms the examiner is using okay so this 18 percent is earning before tax okay what imply therefore we can determine the earning before tax for this company before the investment was three twenty five thousand the earning before tax for this company was three twenty five thousand would imply therefore it increases from the five thousand plus five seventy six thousand okay therefore therefore the profit before tax for this investment after we make the project this investment the revised the revised profit before tax will be equal to five seventy six thousand plus the profit before tax which was there before which was equal to three twenty five thousand okay you have it here three twenty five thousand To give us how much? Sorry, was this three point five thousand? Was it? Wait a minute. It was sorry. It was three million, not three point five thousand. It was three million. It was three million. It was three. Three million to fifty thousand. To give that much. So that eight twenty six thousand. Okay, thank you for that. So we get that eight twenty six thousand. However, don't forget for this financing alternative, we are paying interest which we never used to pay before. And we are paying an interest of 192,000. Okay. However, don't forget the interest you're paying, okay, has an inter tax yield. Okay. So therefore, you can see therefore the okay. So let me just put it in us to disk. Okay. You can see here the profit for tax, okay. But after we consider the interest, it is going to be equal to that 826,000 minus you are paying an interest of 192,000. You're paying an interest of 192,000 to give us how much to pay tax. Yes, you're paying tax 20%. Yes, you're paying tax at 20%. So we can see they have profit for tax for this particular case. Is how much? Okay, and you get the profit for tax equal to 36, 34. Okay, so Jeffrey is asking, what of what what of the other interest? Yeah, uh, don't forget when you are or when you are using, okay, the three this figure here that a twenty six already this figure has taken care of that interest. And actually, in case maybe it's, uh, uh, it's a bit confusing, okay, you can try to uh, start all the way from the profit before interest tax. Okay, you can start all the way from that part from that bit. Okay. But don't forget that, that 826 was after deducting the old interest, if I remember. If, if you check here, the, that, uh, that 250 
here the 250 was after deducting the 200. So it has been taken care of by that 250. Okay, so you don't need to subtract again the 200. Okay. I hope, it, I hope that's clear, Jeffrey. Okay. Okay, fair enough. Going back to our analysis. So you get that six, uh, that four to be our profit for tax. Then you pay tax. Okay, and you're paying tax at 30, 20%. Therefore, we can say profit of tax is gain one minus the 20% tax we pay, okay, times that six, that four. To give us how much to be our profit of tax. Okay, to give us 29 to 7200. Okay, so if you don't use, okay, uh, I want to pause the way uh, maybe Jeffrey, this is Jeffrey was suggesting, okay, you can do it for sure, there's no harm, okay, where you're going to be having profit before you internet tax, okay, but here you're going to assume that there's you're going to assume that this entire of it is profit for the interest tax. Okay, no, no, you're going to assume, so profit, okay. So you don't need to do this, but in case you do want to use that approach, okay. It'll be five and six from the new project plus the old profit before interest tax, which was equal to that 450. So plus that 450, that's this time around. Okay, plus that 450, plus that 450. Then you pay the interest, and the interest you're paying is going to be one in two thousand plus the old interest two hundred thousand. Okay, so here you have a figure. Here you have a figure. That will come for profit before tax. So here you're subtracting this figure. Then you pay the tax at twenty percent, and here you get the profit after tax. Okay. So I presuppose that you ought to get the same, okay? So if that's what you want to prefer, but you're going to get the same answer either way. Okay, so here, the revised earning per share, therefore, let's say therefore revised earning per share is the revised earnings, which you obtain 29.07,200. Don't forget this is debt financing, so the number of share don't increase, they remain at 10 million. So divide by 10 million, and we get 29, Point one, okay, or to simply zero point two nine over dollar, okay. Zero point two nine over dollar kind of for the revised annual per share. To make a comment, you compare with the current annual per share of twenty six cents, okay. So this seems to be in terms of annual per share, it seems to be a, a good financial alternative. Why? Because it results to an increase in annual per share from twenty six cents to twenty nine cents per year. Okay, from 26 cents to 29 cents per year. Okay, there's a comment you are meant to make. Okay, it's a good financial alternative. Why it is not an increase in the company earning per share? Well, the question doesn't stop there. Okay, our question doesn't stop there. He's asking us, I need to get an interest cover. You meant to get an interest cover somewhere. Yes, you meant to get the interest cover issue. Okay, so before and after, of course, shall we comparing what is interest cover for? The interest cover before, okay. Don't forget the profit before interest tax. You have it here. Then we divide by the interest you are paying, 200. Therefore, that 450 divided by 200. Profit before interest tax divided by the interest, 200. That can for the current uh, interest cover. Okay. So interest cover. Yes, it is giving us profit before interest tax. We divide by the interest the company is paying. You can see currently, it is equal to that 450, the interest, the profit volume tax. We divide by the interest company is currently paying 200 and get 17 point. Okay, we got 4026, so 4026, okay. 
so four twenty six thousand dollars okay four twenty six Fair enough so here therefore you need let me erase this okay so forty twenty six so forty twenty six we divide by the number we that's profit in tax we divide by the interest the device interest which we have here okay which we have here which is 121 into plus 20000 and we get okay and we do get 1392 get 392 so we divide by 392 okay so we divide by 392,000. Give us how much? <clears throat> 10 point? 